All right, good afternoon, guys. Um, today's lesson, sorry I couldn't be here. I have a little doctor's appointment for my leg. Had to get in and see him, so I will see you guys tomorrow. But <clears throat> what we'll be doing today is going over Chapter 3, uh, the review from the end of class on Monday. Sorry, that says Friday. It's been a late night. Um, we will discuss some vocab important for trial movie number two. Remember, we watched that one on Eli Lilly. Uh, this one is... The State of Florida versus Newton and Newton, and we'll talk more about the case in a second here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and watch that and fill out the sheets that the sub will hand out to you. All right, but first, uh, go and get your scrap pieces of paper that you filled out the answers on. They're behind the black and the white printer up on the little, little uh, up in the ledge <coughs> right there. So uh, if someone could pass those out or if you guys just want to go up there and grab them, that'd be awesome. So, go ahead and pause this and uh, hit play when, when they're ready. Alright, so as you can see, we have our, uh, our sheet up here on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and number these quickly. Holy... S one second here. Alright, so hopefully we can go ahead and see... Uh, these numbers up on the screen, I've never done this before, so work with me. I know I've already made fun of my 8 from last, uh, from Monday, so you got the same looking 8. All right, an illegal or dangerous substance that harms a person's body or mind would be drug use, all right, which is number 9. A crime that costs Americans, uh, consumers billions of dollars each year and is the act of stealing goods, that is shoplifting. Number three, uh, the doctrine of government's rights allows federal and state governments to regulate health, safety, welfare, and morals of people. That is public policy. All right, statutes defining uh, a minor who has committed an act that would be a crime if done by an adult uh, are found in every state. That is a delinquent child. Delinquent. In 1990, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the, constitu uh, the constitutional constitutionality of a temporary roadblock to check for drunk drivers. That would be sobriety checks. All right, if damage is extensive, willful or malicious causing of damage to property may be considered uh, a serious crime, which is vandalism. All right, causing of damage to property, vandalism. Number seven, when a need for regular consumption of drugs or alcohol exists, the person can no longer function normally without the drugs and alcohol. He is addicted. Addiction, number six. People who are mistreated by family members are victims of reckless form of physical or mental abuse. That is domestic violence. Remember, it doesn't just have to be physical. It can also be mental. The action of minors who who has done something that would not be a crime if it were done by an adult include truancy and running away that is unruly children unruly children alright so once again if you are under the age of like 18 and you're smoking cigarettes okay once you turn 18 that's legal but since you're under it's called an unruly child 10 the goal of a juvenile court system is to steer the youthful offender in the right direction that is rehabilitation. All right, so there you have it, folks. Um, take some time, look those over, and I put that in your grade book as a formative. All right, so it should be there. If you failed to do it or got a bunch wrong, that's why there's a zero. All right. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, trial number two, a little briefing, so you guys have an idea of what's going on when they start using these big words and uh, talking about things that we haven't talked about yet. So, the legal issue in this case uh, is the keeping of a loaded gun in a holster between the mattress and headboard of a waterbed in a house with young children, an act of culpable negligence. All right, that is a long sentence. There's lot, lots of things going on there. So, uh, once again is keeping a loaded handgun in a holster between the mattress and headboard of a waterbed in a house with young children an act of culpable culpable negligence excuse me now you, 
we have to ask ourselves, well, first of all, what is negligence? All right. Negligence is the failure to exercise the degree of care that a responsible person would have exercised in the same circumstances. So negligence is being negligent. It's uh, failing to do something that uh, would they consider a reasonable person to have done. Okay. <clears throat> now it has that word culpable uh, in front of it. So what does that mean? Uh, that is recklessly acting without reasonable caution and putting other another person at the risk of injury or death or failing to do something with the same consequences. So, um, once again, recklessly acting without reasonable caution and putting another person at the risk of injury or death. So, because that person got injured or died, uh, it was due to your uh, you doing something reckless and without reasonable caution. All right. Now, say you're trying to defend yourself against negligence. There are three defenses against negligence. There are contribu uh, contributory negligence. All right, the plaintiff's own negligence helped cause the injuries. So it's not just um, it's not just your fault. It's it's the fact that they were being negligent as well. Uh, that led to their injuries. Uh, this one is used quite often. Most states use comparative negligence. Uh, this is uh, one where negligence of each party is then compared. All right, and the amount of the plaintiff's recovery is reduced. Once again, the amount of the plaintiff's recovery is reduced by the percentage of their negligence. So, for example, um, let's see here, C.J. All right, is driving down the road and gets in a car accident with Haley. Okay, um, they they figure that the damages to or the jury finds out the damages are worth a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and but they also find out that ten percent of the issue was or problem was Haley's. All right, and only ninety percent of the problem was was CJ's. Okay, so then in that instance. Haley would only receive ninety thousand uh, dollars because um, that's how much they feel CJ was was um, the percentage she was negligent for. There we go. I got that spit out. <coughs> and the third one is assumption of risk. Uh, the defendant can show that the plane if the defendant can show that the plaintiff uh, knew that there was risk involved and still took the chance, uh, the case will be dropped because um, for, for example here, uh, this gets used a lot in baseball games. Say that uh, some fan or spectator gets hit with a, a bat, a broken bat, or the guy lets go of the bat and hits him, clocks him in the head. Well, <clears throat> that's why they have signs all over baseball stadiums saying, uh, please be uh, aware of flying balls and flying bats, because um, that can happen. So. If you go to a baseball game, you know the risk that it could happen. They have signs and um, warning you to, to pay attention. So that one's used a lot in, the, in that kind of case. All right, so on to the movie here. The sub will now hand out a sheet for the movie. All right, you will either be a prosecutor, uh, the defense, or the jury. Okay, please don't fight over um, who is who. All right. Um, please fill out the sheet handed to you, and please don't bicker like I just said. Take your sheet with, you know, and uh, do some work. Uh, we'll discuss this case tomorrow in the beginning of class. Um, please stop watching the video when you reach the verdict, which is about 35 minutes in. If there's any time remaining, I will put a worksheet on uh, on BB9. However, uh, there might not be that much time left, so. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing fired up, and I'll, I'll get this on YouTube, and you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, guys, and please behave. All right. If I, uh, if I hear anything, we'll make sure we, uh, we get a seating chart for a Thursday. All right? Sounds good. I'm excited to see you guys. All right. Have a good day. Bye.